20 verses 11 through 15. In Revelation 11, now this is the third uh, uh, Sunday that we spent on one chapter. Usually we would go through one chapter each Sunday, but Revelation 20 uh, has three basic uh, sections. First was the millennium. And we talked about that thousand year reign of Christ that has a beginning and an end. So we know that it's a definite time uh, in the future after the, after the uh, uh, tribulation period, after these things. And so we see that, uh, and of course, the Lord is going to rule and reign for a thousand years. Last week, we also looked at the, where, what we're going to be doing and what saints are going to be doing there, during the millennium. And we will be ruling and reigning with the Lord for how long? A thousand years. Now in chapter 20, verse 11, we see a third major section. And this is a different judgment than chapter 5. Well, in fact, if you keep your finger here, and if you want to flip back to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, Paul tells us, of course, he's going to be absent from the body present with the Lord. But he tells Christians that all of us are going to stand before the Lord one day. But the question is, when? And that's a big question. And chapter 5 of 2 Corinthians, in verse, um, in verse 9, he says, Therefore, we make it our aim, whether present or absent, to be well-pleasing to him. Now, he talked about absent from the body, present with the Lord. And so whether I'm with the Lord or here on earth, I want to be well-pleasing to the Lord. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive the things done in the body according to what he has done, whether good or bad. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, but we are well known to God and I also trust are well known to your consciences. So absent from the body, present with the Lord, but one day Christians, the, those that, uh, um, that will be called, uh, whether dead or alive, are going to stand before the Lord sometime during the tribulation. And that's why we see in chapter 19 of the book of Revelation, of the Lamb, the bride, the church, has made herself ready. So sometimes, all this stuff is going on here on uh, earth. God will be judging the saints in heaven. That's where we will receive our inheritance. That's where you and I are going to be judged, whether it's been good or bad. That's why the Lord tells us to lay up treasures uh, in heaven uh, for ourselves. And of course, our treasures are not of this world. And so someone said, uh, the pay on earth is not that great for serving the Lord. But uh, the retirement system's out of this world. Well, that's true. And we see that, uh, <clears throat> that there's be a judgment for Christians. And so one day, we'll stand before the Lord, and he will judge us whether, and tell us. And of course, we know uh, later on, he says that uh, he's going to judge it by fire. And the things, he's, and the, things the wood, hay, hay, and stubble is going to be blown away, burned away. But the things that we've done for him will last for eternity. And so what we've done for the Lord is going to be, is going to uh, dictate a lot about the quality and the status of our eternity. That's about rewards. Yeah, that's rewards. That's what I mean. Now, it's interesting, uh, though, the grace of God and how that, and I can't, I, I can't, can't quite make it out. Uh, talking about John MacArthur, I saw a quote of his this past week. But he said, you know, thief on the cross will be in heaven just like, like the Apostle Paul or anyone else who has given their life to serving the Lord. That's true. Now, will the Apostle Paul be closer to... Why will the thief in the cross receive a reward? I don't know. But God is fair. Well, not God isn't fair. If he was, if he was fair, I'd be in hell today. But uh, there's a lot of better people than me that aren't going to make it because of their lack of grace. But uh, God's grace saved me. And saved you. It's by grace that we are saved and not the, of ourselves. And so, not of works lest any man should boast. So, uh, uh, but God in his grace, in his, in his perfect judgment, knows exactly what he's doing. And so the thief on the cross, I'm looking forward to seeing him. Will I be ahead of him? I doubt it. You know, he got closer to Jesus than I've ever been, you know, <laughs> physically anyway. But uh, 
There again, uh, I don't know. Those are, the, those are those imponderable things we've talked about several times. And I'll tell you about 50 years from now, okay? When I'm in heaven, I hope you, well, some of you won't be, but uh, I will be. Uh, that's it. That's it. Going to be his reward. But what? Right. But even even the heaven at its least is better than hell at its best. Yeah. And so that's what I mean. Is there's there's just this staggering, the dimensions that we just cannot understand. The height and the depth and the width that Paul talks about. We just cannot understand the magnitude of the thoughts of God. Just the uh, just unreal. And so we see, first of all, then, that uh, that judgment is different. Now, can you tell a difference between that and look at the contrast here in chapter 20, back in Revelation, as we begin in verse 11? He says, Then I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, for whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead and small and great standing before the God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged according to their works by the things which were written in the books. The sea gave up the dead that were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead that were in them. And they were judged, each one according to their works. Then death and Hades were cast into the lake of fire, this is the second death. And anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. The second death. So we see that there's either two births or two deaths. Either you're born again or you'll die again. And so we see that, uh, that one day the most the small and great Everybody, no matter what, uh, uh, what status in life, you know, so we, we look at people by levels, you know, upper level, lower level, genius, whatever. I don't want to use the word, but, uh, but you know, but, or we look at uh, high class, low class, middle class. God looks at it left and right. Either you have it or you don't. And, uh, the, and of course, we know that uh, the poor class church um, um, in, uh, in Revelation. I want to say Sardis. No, that was the dead church. What's the, uh, uh, the Smyrna? Uh, Smyrna, of course, he said, you're poor, but you're rich. So God looks at uh, riches a whole lot differently than we do. And so we see now then that, that this is the, uh, that we have, uh, we see the redeemed resurrected and they're reigning. We're already reigning with God by this time. That's, we, uh, that's taken care of in the first 10 verses. So we're reigning with the Lord for a thousand years. The saints of all ages will be part of the, this uh, a grand period of peace on earth. These saints are called the first resurrection back in, chapter, in verse 6. Then verse 11, we see a great contrast. All those whose names were not found in the book of life stand before an almighty God. Back in Philippians chapter 2. We see that Paul says that uh, we must all stand before uh, right and, uh, and the, that um, and one day uh, and that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And I will be doing that at this great white throne judgment. But I'll be in back of the throne and you will be too if you know the Lord as your Savior. It, uh, as we said, it, uh, this it depends so much real estate, a realtor, location, location, location. It matters greatly where you are at this throne. If you're in the gallery watching the proceedings, then you've already been judged. If you're standing out there in front, you're in big trouble. You see that it says death and hell, I mean death and Hades were cast into the lake of fire. Do you know where people are now that are evil, that died here, where they're at? Well, they're in Hades, you're right. And they're... Because right. then he's going to throw it into the lake of fire and brimstone. That, that's the end of it. Right there. Well, there again is, I agree with that totally. What I don't understand is someone who died a thousand years ago has been punished for a thousand years longer than a person who's living today. I don't understand all that, yeah. but God does. 
There again, I can't get into what God's doing other than the fact that just this is what God tells me, and it, and I'll figure out the rest. Uh, we'll understand it better by and by. But God is just. That means He's totally righteous. He is totally equitable with everybody that lives. And so, God let us know everything he knows. right. You got it. So we see, first of all, the, the, the judgment, there's the judge upon the throne. Notice it's a great white throne. It's interesting because we see in uh, chapter 1, verse 4, and chapter 22, which is the end chapter, uh, verse 3, that Jesus is on the throne. And we see thrones more times in the book of Revelation than all the rest of the Bible combined. And so we th- see the throne of God and the thrones that uh, and those thrones are mentioned 30 times in the book of Revelation. The particular throne depicts uh, power. Notice white is, is purity. Uh, judgment, great white throne. Um, and so we see that the, these are all the judgments of God. Um, and of course, uh, uh, you know, one of the things that is imposing, you know why the uh, Supreme Court, if, if from what I understand, when you go there, they sit way up and they look down on the people. That's the highest court in the land. And so when you go before them, you better be prepared because they're going to throw all kinds of questions at you. And, uh, of course, some people crumble under it. Uh, that's why you've got to have Supreme Court lawyers because, uh, you know, and th- those guys are paid pretty pennies. But uh, there again, but that's great white throne. That's the idea. This throne is going to be so imposing that whenever the Lord is there, uh, every knee is going to bow. I mean, everybody who today laughs at God, this is going to be shaking in your boots territory. The greatest man on earth uh, is going to, Napoleon, well, I don't know about Napoleon. Uh, sometimes some people think he may have been saved later on in life. But uh, you take the Hitlers or whatever else, and there again, I'll say, if they didn't get saved, you know, they're, they're in hell. But um, so we see this particular uh, throne depicts power and great purity. Uh, him that sat upon it. Notice uh, Back in John chapter 5, the Lord says, For the Father judges no one, but has given that judgment to his Son. Uh, That's what the Lord said back in John chapter 5, verses 22 and 23. So we see that Jesus will be the judge. He came the first time to offer grace. He comes the second time to judge. And so we see that every knee shall bow. Notice also in Acts 17, uh, verse 31, he says, Because... He hath appointed a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness. And again, this is one of Paul's preaching to, the, to those high-minded Athenians, you know, those uh, idol worshipers in Athens. And so here he's saying there's coming a day when God's going to judge you. Now, you think you're pretty smart right now, but there's coming a day when that God or God, the God of creation is going to judge you. I like when people tell me, I don't believe all that. Well, I like to tell them, one day you will. You know, uh, that's, that's uh, uh, now I don't do it meanly. I try to do it as lovingly as I can. Yeah, one day you will. No, I don't want to win the argument. I want to win the soul. So I don't want to get them offended. But I will try to say as affectionately as I can, one day you will. You know, so there again, you're not arguing with somebody. Won't you get saved, dummy? You know, no, 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 no. That's not going to win anybody to the Lord. You know, so we lovingly, with tears, as we saw with Paul, praise and ask, you know, he's wanting to see people saved. And then in Romans 2.16, we see in the day when the Lord shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ, according to my gospel. And there again, that's Romans 2.16. And that's uh, in that section, chapters one through three, where we see the world is condemned by sin. Romans chapter one tells us just how that God gives them over to sin They're captivated by sin. They're in a slave market. And he says, but one day God is going to judge men. Then we see that, uh, notice it says, from the face of the earth, heaven fled away. Uh, The earth also and the works therein shall be turned, uh, shall be burned up. And that we see that in 2 Peter chapter 3. 
So one day, God, the earth is going to be no more as we know it today. The elements, in fact, Paul, uh, Peter tells us in 2 Peter chapter 3, shall uh, melt with a fervent heat. Now, all the way up until the time of Oppenheimer, I understand there's a movie out about him now. Uh, people said, you know, whenever you studied chemistry, you had the basic elements. And those elements couldn't be destroyed because that's basic well, you know, iron, all you can do is melt it, but you can't destroy it. But then along comes the atom bomb. And all of a sudden they realize that elements can be totally vaporized, as they call it today. And so, uh, um, so yes, the elements will burn. With, so God's going to make a new heaven and a new earth. And so we see that uh, it talks about that idea there of um, where the where the heaven and earth shall flee, flee away. And notice uh, in verse uh, and also, um, he says that there's no place for them to hide. And uh, so, and notice it says they received and they lived in, but he tells us back in verse four that uh, these people will be taken up, uh, they will be standing before the Lord. And we know that, uh, again, in Philippians chapter 3, the Lord tells us that, uh, that every knee shall bow of things in heaven and things on earth and things under the earth. And notice here, we see that the sea shall give up its dead. Well, you said, wait a minute, what if a shark ate somebody? Well, if God knows every molecule of my body, then he knows every molecule of my body that he can, recon he can reconstitute my body uh, from a shark. Can he not? If God created me, can he not recreate me? If, if he lets me fall apart, can he not say, pull yourself back together? No, God doesn't say that. I mean, spiritually, sometimes he has to. But uh, there again, God can pull us back together. There again, uh, you say, well, that is so strange, preacher. Well, listen, I, I'm, I'm not God. God is so big, I can't, I can't even explain him to you. But if God says he's going to do it, he's going to do it. Wow, I don't know. <laughs> I don't have to know how. I just have to know my God he says he can do whatever he wants to do. And so don't get into all these arguments. Well, how do you know this? Well, because God says that's the best, best way. And it's faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God, not my arguments. And so if I can lead the word of God in someone's life and ask God to apply it to their hearts, but if all I do is make them mad because I won the argument, then I've lost a soul. And so, you know, there, there again, that's not up to me to win the person. That's me to present the gospel and for you to present the gospel to a lost and dying world. And so we see again, so verses 12 and 13, we see those that stand before them, uh, before the Lord, because he tells us, in verse uh, 12, um, he says, And I saw the dead, small and great, that's every class, every power structure, rich and poor, standing before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened. And so we see, first of all, the dead, small and great, that's all strata of society, all who died without redemption, all who were lost at sea, no uh, particular horror to the ancient mariners, and that's true. That's the reason they had their sea gods and everything else and those boats, even the one that Paul, uh, Luke and his great, uh, it's interesting the things that he puts in detail and other things he leaves, leaves out. But uh, he even tells us about that God that, that was on the, the masthead of the ship that Paul was sailing to Rome on. And so, you know, they were totally in idolatry. Uh, and yet he doesn't tell us a thing about the Temple of Diana, which was one of the eight wonders of the world. You know, it's kind of interesting how that uh, some people think that uh, Luke and Paul just were not very aesthetic because they didn't tell us about, you know, we're going to be talking about him going through roads uh, on his way to, back to Jerusalem from Greece or from, uh, from, you know, from the Aegean Sea between Greece and Turkey now. Uh, well, they would have sailed under that Colossus of Rhodes. Remember that, that big statue that was up, it was so tall that sailing ships would uh, sail beneath it or between its legs? Well, Luke didn't say a thing about it. You know, he didn't say a thing about any of those beauties of Athens or whatever else. He just talked about grace. 
But then when he talks about gods and false gods and what the, the problems and tries to give you the setting that Paul's in, he tells you about a God that was even a part of that very ship that Paul was sailing on. And, and uh, so it's kind of interesting what he, what he, how, he, how the historians, you can tell a lot about them by the things they put in and the things they leave out. Uh, that's why when you study people, uh, you want a good objective historian who will tell you the faults of a man as well as good. Because, you know, there was a guy named Bishop Reams who uh, wanted to, uh, to make George Washington such an example to small boys that he told us about George Washington's was so strong that he could sell, throw a silver dollar all the way across the Potomac. Well, nobody could do that. I can't even throw a baseball across that far, you know, uh, and especially where he was talking about, uh, that he chopped down the cherry tree you know, my father, I cannot tell a lie. Well, there was the old story about Jimmy Carter with that with the peach tree. Remember Jimmy Carter? You remember Jimmy Carter? Uh, uh, Jimmy, did you cut down the, uh, did you chop down the, cherry, the peach tree? Uh, father, I cannot tell a lie. Maybe I did, maybe I didn't. But you know, <laughs> but, uh, you know, but uh, no, uh, uh, yo, I cannot tell a lie, you know, or whatever. So, but uh, that was all, but then what happens, that invites people to come back and say, oh, my, he wasn't a saint. And boy, they come out and they tell you all kinds. Well, George Washington was a sinner just like the rest of us. You know, there were some questionable things in his life. Do you have any questionable things in your life? Anybody that you know not have some things that maybe you hope don't anybody ever find out? No, except for my wife, she was perfect. But other than that, you know, uh, <laughs> But, uh, but, you know, uh, that, isn't that true with all of us? And as a pastor, I know that. And there are things that I will go to my grave knowing about certain people because that's just the way life is. But that's a bit, so whenever, you know, uh, um, my wife doesn't know things, I, there are many things that I just will not tell people because it was told me in confidence. But uh, there again, we're all sinners. And boy, oh boy, I hope a lot of things don't come out about me when I die or whatever, you know. But uh, I was just a sinner saved by grace. And I look back today and still wake up at night sometimes in a cold sweat saying, how could I have ever done that, you know? I think of some of the dumb things I did as a teenager, you know. <laughs> but uh, let's all get into that. But, uh, um, but there again, uh, but the small and great, all of us are going to be. But the bad thing about it, how many of us would like our life history to be shown on a screen? These guys are going to have it. Ooh, the books are opened. And all of a sudden, you're going to see all that. And it's not going to be pretty. No wonder there's going to be a lot of tears. And so we see that um, the dead, small and great, the, those who are dead, lost at sea, and those the abodes, and we talk, you talked about the Shoal and Hell, or Hades, they gave up their dead. So that means that people that are in Hades today will be brought back up. To, for their final judgment, uh, that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow of things in heaven, things on earth, and things under the earth, hell, and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. There again, notice he's the judge, and when we glorify our Jesus, we glorify the Father. But here we see that the Lord is going to judge. And that's why, uh, you know, I tell, if you don't bow to the Lord one day or today, one day you will. So every knee is going to bow to the Lord. I want to be behind that throne saying, thank you, Lord Jesus. And I don't want to be in front of that throne where I look up and he says, it says those terrifying words, depart from me, for I never knew you. That will be the most frightening sentence in all of history. Condemnation to hell. And so <clears throat> we see the criteria of the judgment in verse 12. The books were opened. And they're judged according to their works. Um, does God keep a record of every act? Well, he tells us, Matthew tells us that uh, every word. Boy, that's scary. But then also... Uh, uh, is there going to be, are there going to be degrees in hell? The Lord says to whom much is given, much is going to be required. So there will be degrees of hell also. 
So hell's going to be a lot worse for some people than for others. Well, pastor, what about the person in Africa that never heard about the Lord? By the way, they're, uh, the Africa in the last 150 years has been one of the most evangelized continents in the world, or, or of all. Um, <clears throat> but um, but uh, every knee. So what about, well, what I like to say is, what about those former Baptist uh, church members at uh, at Calvary Baptist who let their kids grow up without knowing the Lord Jesus Christ that they just quit going to church because they didn't want to go anymore. Who's going to be judged the most? And so how many of those, how many of those people that, uh, uh, that heard the gospel over and over again? Are they going to be right here in Belvedere? Are they going to be judged differently than that person in Russia or Afghanistan that got meager, meager mor- mortal, uh, morsels of the word of God. So there again, you know, God is just and he is totally just. And he will bring uh, um, equity, if you want to call it that. Not the, not the uh, same outcome, but uh, it, will be, it will be equal justice. And every person, every individual will stand before God. And you say, what about the person who doesn't, they lost their mind or whatever. And I, said, I don't know. All I know is I got a just God. Uh, what about that person who nearly got saved and didn't? Boy, they're in trouble, you know. Uh, so uh, you, uh, how many ways can we go with this? Every individual is a little different. And so, again... The one thing, though, is every person within the sound of my voice is going to stand before God one day. Where will you be? In back of that throne or in front of it? And if you're rejecting God today, that just means that judgment gets a little harsher because to whom much is given, much is required. He that hath the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son of God hath not life. All one-syllable words that a first grader can understand. Do you have the Lord Jesus living in your heart? And so we see the criteria. They're going to be judged according to their works and according to their advantages or opportunities to accept the Lord. And then we see also the determining factor of all, the book of life. It's, and whosoever is not found written in the book of life is cast into the lake of fire. Hell is real. For the wages of sin is death. We know that back uh, in Romans 3.23. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The second death, of course, we'll look at that again in chapter 21, verse 8, where he says, and all shall be cast in the lake of fire, which is the second death. So again, we see two births or two deaths. Also, uh, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? Um, Which began to be spoken by the Lord and it was confirmed to us by those who heard him. That's Romans, uh, or that's Hebrews 12, 3. How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? And no, but there's no, not going to be a place to hide. Every person will stand before the Lord. This is a very sobering five verses. And then we see the second death is defined as a lake of fire in chapter 20, verses 15, 10 and 15. It's eternal and it's torment. That's where we see back uh, the Lord con- uh, confirm this back in Matthew chapter 13 in one of his parables, how that they will be cast into torment. And so hell is going to be, uh, it's going to be eternal and it's going to be severe and it's not going to be pleasant. And think about hell. Uh, in him is life. So that means a second death. Um, we call certain, we call, we have what's called common graces of God. And then there's specific grace, if you want to get into all those terminologies theologically. Specific grace is saving grace. But a common grace, can, can an unsaved person love other people dearly? Yes. Can they do good works? Yes. Uh, does the rain uh, rain on the, the just and the unjust alike? Yes, that's common grace. And so we see that, uh, but so in hell, grace is not going to be there because the God of grace isn't there. 
And if God is love, guess what's not going to be there? Love. Oh, I'll get together with my good old buddies. We'll have a good old time. You'll be hating them because the common grace of love, you won't have the capacity to love. And hell, that's going to be a horrible situation. But you notice, the more that people turn away from God today, the more they hate, the more they're, they're violent. The may, the, just listen to the this, this stuff being spewed out by the very people you were talking about earlier that have rejected God. They, they're not happy people. They're angry. And they want to keep showing off or whatever. Look what I can do. I can parade around the street naked and all this kind of stuff. Well, they're not a happy bunch of people. And even if they get it, well, I like to tell them, you get everything you want, what, what else do you want? Oh, we, the, the only thing they can do is keep attacking Christians. You never hear them say, oh, Buddha, <laughs> or, or oh, Confucius. It's, you know, they curse the Lord Jesus Christ. It's interesting how that is, isn't it? And so we see that uh, uh, death and hell. And, uh, you, and so do, am I mad at these people that are marching around and doing all this? Yes, I want to protect my children. I hope I have a righteous anger, though, because one day they're going to be standing before our Lord. And I feel sorry for them. Uh, there again, I don't know. The only thing I know about, the only time, glimpse that we have is uh, that's the only person I know in the Bible that talked to anybody in hell. I know, it's in there. Dip your finger in my, your finger in my tongue. Yeah, okay. okay. There again, uh, your guess is as good as mine. I, I don't know. I know, but there again. But yeah, but that was the Lord giving a great example. And Abraham had a status at the time. He was the head of one of those abodes. You know what I think is going to happen? That's in the 80s now. 80s. Oh, yeah. That's going to be cast into the lake of fire. Yeah. Yeah, well, there again, you think, and I, I think, and there again is, that's where we can talk about it all day long. All I can tell is this is what God says, and then we can imagine the rest. And uh, we can argue about it all you want to, but you know, <laughs> but you, no, I know. It, it's disgusting, it's fun, isn't it? But it's scary. It's downright scary when you think about this. And when I really think about those people that will curse, you, curse me or curse you for giving them gospel, should I get mad at them? It hurts, but I should really be quite concerned for their souls. Amen? Amen? Well, let's pray. Father, thank you for your word. Oh, Lord, keep us compassionate as you are. You love the sinner and you hate the sin. May we love the sinner, Lord, in spite of their sin. But, oh, Father, may we be willing to bear the reproach of the cross in order to see them saved. Bless your word, Lord, as we look into it. In Jesus' name, amen.